That's <laughs> so solid. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, can still hear you. <laughs> it warms up very fast. Oh yeah. It looks it looks bigger than it is. Once you're in there, it's actually quite a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> you good? Yeah. Where's that noise coming from? <laughs> I was gonna go take a poo. <laughs> since I uploaded my last YouTube video. In the meantime, I hit more than a thousand subscribers. For me, that's really a lot. I just uploaded a few videos and share what I do and the amount of feedback and love I get from you guys out there. It's, it's incredible, it's really cool. It makes me make more videos. Thank you so much. So in um, today's video, I will show you the CNC I bought, how I make these wooden climbing holes and I will also show you how I made these two boxes, two enclosures to, to keep all the dust um, in there and um, to reduce the noise level uh, while I'm milling. Some of you guys are, might not be really interested in making these uh, wooden climbing holes. You might just be interested in how I made this enclosure and how good is it. So there will be a part how I build it, there will be a part how is the performance, the noise reduction of the, of the enclosure, and then I will guide you guys who are interested in the wooden climbing holes through the machine and how I make these holes. So let's get started. Okay, let's jump straight into it. I started with building a workbench. It's a simple but sturdy workbench. I used some leftover frame timber and I bought some plywood for the tabletop and these big posts. I also built a bottom enclosure. The bottom enclosure is for the vacuum and it's also basically a proof of concept how well does this enclosure design reduces noise level. This is halfway through the build process. The workbench is finished, the bottom enclosure not yet. You can see the polystyrene for insulation and between the plywood and the frame you can see black rubber. The black rubber is to decouple those parts and to reduce noise level. At the back you can see two channels, one going to the top, one going to the left side. The purpose of these channels is to feed through power cords, data cables and vacuum hoses. After some first performance tests I was really happy with the noise reduction of the vacuum enclosure. Therefore I decided to go with the same concept with the same design for the CNC enclosure. That also meant that I needed a lot of rubber. A few moments later. Cutting rubber, done. In the background you can see a pile of laminated 2x4s. That's the timber I'm going to use to build the frame of the enclosure. Here I'm using two blocks of wood to align the stripe so it doesn't overlap. Watching the footage now I could have probably used less nails. More moments later. In the first step I assemble the front part and back part of the frame. I try to make sure that everything is square, 
but it doesn't have to be perfectly square later on the plywood panels will make it square 20 minutes later These screws here just make the assembly easier. They don't contribute much to the structural strength of the enclosure. The whole structure will only be strong when the plywood panels are attached to the frame.
This is the sound level when the CNC is running. I'm going to hold right now, the router is at level 5 or 6, so it's almost at maximum speed. And it's, it's really nice, you can just talk. You don't have to raise your voice when you talk to other people. And I'm going to open the top enclosure. Vacuum is running as well. That's the sound level of the vacuum. Just for comparison, that's the noise level when I talk. The remaining issue I have right now is that after probably an hour of milling, um, it gets quite warm, it gets quite hot in there. Everything is well insulated, for, so it's quite soundproof, but also the heat transfer is slowed down.
So, this long video is slowly coming to an end. There will be a future video where I explain in more detail what my workflow is in designing and shaping the climbing holds and what kind of software I use to do that. A future video will also cover the design improvements and design changes of the CNC, as well as the software I use to control the CNC. I haven't really gone into the pros and cons of milling climbing holds with a CNC. I will do that as well and summarize my big learnings from this journey. Please drop a comment below if there's something specific you're interested in uh, or you want to know, or maybe there's something you think that should definitely be covered in the next video. And if you're interested in what I'm doing in the meantime, I definitely post more often on Instagram than I upload videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh, one more thing. A big thanks to Michael from Logicals. Uh, when I posted that I bought the CNC, he helped me to get a first impression how to actually use it to make climbing holes. We had a video chat and he showed me a couple of things he does. That's, that's so cool. Thank you so much. I also want to make a big shout out to the Facebook groups, Home Climbing Wall Forum and DIY Climbing Holes. Those groups are amazing. There's such a positive vibe and there's so many creative posts. So I get a lot of inspiration from these groups. If you haven't checked out these groups and you're on Facebook, you should definitely check them out.